The food ventures of Soy are powered by our patrons. To become a patron, click the patron link in the description box. Thanks, patrons, for helping to write Soy. Welcome back to Stuck on an Island where I'm stuck with you guys and we are always smiling. So we are now at a local chop shop. In Accra or in Ghana they call chop shops basically the little restaurants that they have that people come and they order several stuff like the, the fufu, the goat stew, the soup, whatever it is. So guys I just got a chance just now to go back into the restaurant and see a bunch of stuff. Alright guys, so we are in this chop shop right now just looking at how everybody gets everything prepared. You guys can see the big basins and bowls as they put everything together. Yo, that is just amazing. So basically back there what they're doing, they have these huge vats, like big metal bowls where they have all the stew in there and they keep it flaming hot. Like behind there too, if we were lucky enough, we'd be able to see them pounding the fufu. Fufu I believe it's a mixture of um, cassava and plantain. Yeah, I made, I made fufu once before only with cassava powder, but that's the real stuff that they have back there. The smells that you get immediately, I smell goat right away. And that's what I ordered just now. I had a goat with, is it like a peanut stew or something like that? That's exactly what I ordered with some fufu. And right here with me, we have Eddie that's back in the video again today. Nana couldn't make it because Nana had work. And um, yo, first of all, thank you so much Eddie for you know being a great host. He's the one that said, yo, let him go back there and film and everything and it's just amazing. Yo, Eddie, you have anything you want to shout out? Any like an Instagram page, anything like that? Um, just, um, just want to say, um, you're all welcome to Ghana and um, we're always here to be, your, be of assistance. Awesome. Alright, so I'm going to drop some info on Eddie. So Eddie has a real estate company basically, so he does realty. So anybody that wants to come here, maybe find somewhere to rent or just invest in Ghana, get an apartment or whatever, I'll get his information and I'll drop it in the description box so you guys can hit him up. I think it's a great country to invest in because the culture here is super, super rich. And of course we have Jilly over here. Jilly, what did you get? As you came here, what did you order? I ordered a Coke. Oh yeah, she got a Coke. And Jenny said that Coke is like very popular in here in yeah, Ghana, yeah. Very More than Pepsi. And you can taste it's different from back home. Yeah. It's nicer. So, yes. It's sweeter, yeah. I, I like I like the Coke home. here. So, I mean I'm not allowed to have Pepsi until the end of this month, but hey, Coke can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm still I was so excited I had my camera in like the wrong settings before it was like super bright, but that's how excited. Jilly said I look like a police post. In Jamaica, police post means like a super happy person. Um, what I'm getting from looking in the environment, seeing everybody eating, it feels very, how can I say, communal. Like back home in Jamaica, we have probably like more of a Western approach to eating. Like you have like your own little table and kind of sectioned off a little bit. Here it reminds me a lot more like how we used to eat when I was in boarding school. So I went to Monroe College and it was like a canteen effect. Like, you know, you could basically sit close to someone else. So 
that's the experience that I'm getting. And what I love seeing is those little bowls that people are reaching into. It seems like it keeps the food very hot. I'm gonna ask Eddie and Eddie's gonna like fill you guys in as to what they are. Oh, these are Evanware, Evanware bowls. Okay. They're made out of uh, clay. Clay? Yeah. Okay. And um, there is um, a local paint derived from natural sources that is used to coat it. You okay. understand? And that's what we eat from. And, um, I don't know whether it adds to the taste or something, but <laughs> it makes it makes the whole um, experience very special. Even more special. You understand? Yeah, because uh, um, the experience you have eating from it is uh, very different from the experience you have eating from a plastic or um, some other form of uh, uh, eating where eating where. Yeah. I agree. I agree. And um, you mentioned that this place has been around for. A long time for maybe more than um, maybe close to 50 years. Close to 50 years. Yeah, because as a child, um, we used to come here. Our parents used to bring us here, and then um, wow. they used to send us to get food from here as well. From when I was nine. So that means the food is super good then. Yeah, it's super good. Super good. For them to be able to keep this keep this consistency. Yeah. Over four decades. I mean, it should it should tell you something. Got something you. something right about the. So food. why do so a place like this has been around for like 40, 40 years? Is it that they intend to always keep the chop shop? Is it what's it called? Chop shop or chop bar? Chop bar. Chop bar. Yeah. Yeah. So. They intend for it to continue to be a chop bar, just this general open setting, or do you find that these great restaurants try to go into becoming more of that Americanized look? No, it's best to keep it this way because there are bar. people who, who prefer to um, to dine the traditional way. Okay. You know, um, modernizing it into the westernized um, kind of restaurant setting wouldn't do justice to what they provide here. Correct. Which is um, authentic Ghanaian food. So I guess uh, it's best they kept it this way and uh, it's part of the reason um, for their success. Yep. Because um, most Ghanaians who patronize this place uh, would feel um, they are back home in their village settings. Yeah. Because it looks that way. I agree. I agree. So I know a couple of Ghanaians are probably watching and can immediately tell that I'm a tourist because I was calling it a chop shop <laughs> for, for quite a bit of a while, but it's called a it chop bar. But it's a great part about traveling to any country. It's like you're always relearning and it really keeps your life very interesting. When you're at home doing the same things over and over and over, honestly, it makes the work and the money that you earn sometimes feel a little bit futile because there's no interest to it so I would advise anybody doesn't have to be Ghana even though I'd be advising for Ghana you know take the time out travel to these amazing places see other cultures and see how your culture is different from theirs and trust me it has such a huge huge difference on the way how you just observe and see the world trust me it's amazing <laughs> And also, Wow, what did you get? Um, a piece of goat, a piece of uh, goat intestine, yeah, and then a piece of um, fish herring. Yeah. Man, I think you went for the best thing because he went for a triple combo. You have different yeah. flavors. So different, three different flavors. Wow. What did you get, Julie? What did I get? I don't know what I got. So what, you got a piece of goat, mm -hmm. you got a piece of uh, intestine. Mm -hmm. goat intestine. Mm -hmm. So a piece of goat, piece of goat intestine. Yes. Okay. Wow. So you care for the herring? No, no. Right. Was very smoky? The bones? Yes, it's smoky. Okay. Yeah, we had some yesterday. Yeah. But it was fried. Wow. Oh, uh, 
<laughs> so you got a peanut soup. Peanut soup. Yep, and goat. Oh my gosh, yes. So these are both to like wash your hands? Yes. Yep. Awesome. So cool. Yes, you can use it. So, so of course in Ghana, these are your cutlery. Your hands, that's what you eat with in Ghana. So of course, with not even because of COVID, just in general, right? Just in general, they practice this hygiene where they would have your water, you dip your hands in it, and you wash your hands with some soap. How does that feel? Warm. It's it warm feels water. warm and nice? Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh. Whoa, I want to see how you do it the You're first one, the first go. Look at that. Yeah. Delicious. Wow. <laughs> I've never had anything like this before. Never. so cool and the water is warm. Just getting my hands washed. I can already tell you, I much prefer fufu over kinke. Fufu, that's for me. I love fufu. I've never had peanut in a soup before. Mm. So good. Spice level is good too. Mm. Mm. So good. And the ginger. And he ordered extra ginger. Because he was saying that, um, especially during COVID, there you go, there's an extra ginger there. He was saying during COVID, the extra ginger is good to battle that, right? Ginger provides a lot of health benefits. It's pretty gamey. Like you gotta work your way through it, but it's just tender enough for you to get through. 
but you know it's a gold. Mm. Intestines, wow. I prefer more than the gold. Ah, nice. Yeah, the gold kind of gamey. I'm not big on gamey. What is this? Intestines, good. Oh my god. Oh my god. The spice is good. I am powering through. It's so funny. It's not that spicy, but it's just a mixture of just everything. They got onions in here. Yeah. They have ginger in there and literally like ginger it's that's grated on top. So you know, a little bit of pepper in there. So it's not that type of spice where it affects the flavor. You know, when things get spicy, it gets bitter. It's not like that. It's just enough spice that's just along the lips so you feel it. And you guys can see I am sweating bullets. But I've basically gotten through most of everything. I don't eat a lot in general, guys. Even though you see me make all these food videos, I'm not a heavy eater. But I can tell you guys, there's a reason why they call this place Heavy Do. Because the food here, it's very filling. And I guarantee you, you're going to get a bang for your buck. But I can already tell, like the African men, you guys can eat. Because you were like done in like no time, man. Oh my God. Wow. Because I'm probably used to it. And I think I had a double portion of, uh, of what you had. You had a double portion? I think so. <laughs> yeah, because uh, this goes very well. This goes very well. Yeah. yeah, I think the the fufu with the stew. This is easily adaptable to many people. Yeah. So. We're not gonna waste the soup. We're gonna get all that in. And this is how you do it, right? Oh, yeah. great. I can feel the onions yeah. in there. The herbs. There's ginger, there's mm -hmm. tomatoes, there's pepper. Is this made of red palm oil? No. No? No. No. The, the color comes from the tomatoes. And from the, the tomatoes. And then the goat meat. Like the and the goat meat, the fat from it, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So, so, my hands are clean. Today, I shouldn't have worn that Movado watch that Jilly got for Christmas for me because it's leather and yeah, the whatever. But um, 
guys, overall, as an experience, I am so happy that I did this. Super, super happy. Let me come closer and tell you guys, it's something that you need to do. Not only is the cuisine different, I've never experienced anything like this before. The soup making is completely different from what I've seen. I've never seen anyone cook um, like a peanut soup. The fact that you had to eat with your hands full on, that's just, it just makes the whole experience very engaging from washing your hands, from just seeing everyone around you. And what I love about it the most, I can look across at the table and I can see what they do. And this is like a trade tip. Whenever you go to a place, if you don't want to be disrespectful or rude, you can just look across at the other table, see what they are doing, and then try to follow suit. But I, I think I did pretty good today. I think I did um, pretty good. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Thank you, it was delicious. <laughs> oh my God. What's wrong? It's like, yeah, yo. Yeah, she was just exclaiming that uh, you really enjoyed it to the fullest. Yeah, I did. I completely did, man. Everything about the experience. And thank you for allowing us to film back there. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Wow. Let me start with my people of Jamaica. I implore you guys to come to Ghana. I said it the last time when I was in Mexico. We try so hard to get these um, the American visas to travel. You can come here without that. Ghana allows us as Jamaicans to come here. Your passport will take you here. And I promise you, you'll enjoy it. The buildings, the architecture, they're very much modern. A lot more modern than what we see back home. So if it's that you're trying to find somewhere that looks very foreign, as we call it, this is the place to go. And the people are, they're our people. If you get what I'm saying? Like, they're very friendly, they're very welcoming. And the food is food like you have never experienced before. Let me tell you. Eddie, thanks man, I really appreciate it. 10,000 falls, man, yo. Beans, huh? what is the experience like, man? Guys, what is I'm, it like? I'm in foreign, I'm in big foreign. Uh, that's the first thing <laughs> Jilly said, that she's in big foreign, yeah? It's nice here, it's really nice. People uh -huh. are very welcoming, they are just really sweet, very accommodating. Yep. And it's an experience I think everybody should really try to have. Like Steven said, you don't need a visa for come here. Yep. And if you're worried about transit stops, that's not gonna be a problem. Yep. So come on over guys. Diana welcomes you. <laughs> I've been doing YouTube long enough to know the people who are very skeptical with certain stuff. And I know some people will say like no, they will never use their hands to eat. They're very considerate here as well. They actually pop these in. So if you if you don't want to use your hands to eat, which, come on guys, I do recommend. It's a different culture, explore it. Or if you're just having trouble, you want to get the food down very quickly. Yeah, conventional boring spoon is here. One reason why um, we like ginger a lot here is um, it helps uh, get rid of all these uh, mucus in the system. Yeah. You know, uh, so perhaps um, our love for ginger might have played a role in um, the um, low rate of covid infections thank you we 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 experienced here thank you because uh generally um, there's ginger in uh, many meals oftentimes here yeah. so guys they always say like food is healing two things about food that i like to say you experience another country's culture through the food you see where they're coming from through the food right and food is also healing now since i've been sitting here after the meal like, I felt like my throat, like clearing, like literally, like I felt like, you know, you guys get the idea. And Eddie is saying, it's on the ginger. Like, I could literally feel it. I've never eaten anything like that in my life where I could feel that immediately effect, like, yo, what's happening, it's different. Um, of course, you know, when you, in Jamaica, when we eat spicy foods, they make you wanna go, or whatever. But this, I can, I, I can feel it, and I know I'm not the only one. Yeah, I think the only time I felt any clearing up anything is when I have I had like too much wasabi. In yeah, Japanese yeah. Food. But I was saying to Eddie that after eating it, I could have feel my sinuses actually clear. Clear, you know. It's really good. Now I don't mean to lecture or preach, but as I mentioned before, I find that a lot of people are a lot more closer together, especially in chop bars like these. And you'd wonder like, why is it that the COVID levels are lower here? And you know, as Eddie and I were talking about, we really believe that 
because of the foods that they eat, for example, the ginger, the spices, the pepper that help to expel mucus. I mean, this could be one of the reasons why the levels are statistically low, right, Eddie? There was low um, casualty rate uh, regards to the COVID, and then the infection rate was equally low. I believe uh, you can check from uh, statistics from the World Health Organization and then you can confirm what I'm saying. Um, and I believe uh, it boils down to mainly some of the things that we eat here, including um, our love for ginger, pepper, and then um, some other natural natural foods that uh, we, we usually enjoy eating here. Come on Eric, thank you so much, we appreciate it. My soda. <laughs> what's yours is mine, or what's mine is mine. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Never know that, Mama. Oh, they keep the bottle. Good. Oh, yeah. The bottle. Okay. So, like, like if you feel that we're going to buy, we use them. the bottle to buy. Oh, okay. Oh. With that bottle, we will get it. Yeah. Oh. Buy new bottles. Oh, oh. Got gotcha. you. Thank you. So if you guys can listen very closely, because I can't let the music play in the background too much because of YouTube, y'all know that. But Eddie listens to quite a bit of uh, Jamaican reggae. Right now, Eddie listens to Gregory Isaac, I believe. Yeah, Gregory Isaac. He's hitting up some Gregory Isaac right okay. now. Like I said, the cultures are very similar. Now, uh, funny enough, when you're in Ghana, make sure that you don't take the bottles like I was trying to do just now. It's like back home, um, a lot of people, well, Jilly, Especially, Jilly always, you know, takes the bottles that I have and then tries to have them recycled so you get the, the sodas back cheaper. So we had to experience that. So whenever you guys come here, make sure you leave the glass bottles because they're going to need it. And as you guys realize that Chop Bars is just a great communal place for people to even watch things like football. So I was just watching a little bit of the AFCON just now. One of my team's players, which is Eric Bailly, plays for Manchester United. Big up Manchester United. Um, yeah, so that was a vibe, um, just being there, seeing how Ghanaians do their thing. And um, yeah, learning something new as we go along. Okay, I don't know if we're going to end the video here, if we're going to do anything else. Eddie, we're going to do anything else? Um, it's, uh, it's a wrap for today, or is it something else you want to eat? Today? No. I, I I am stuffed. So we can <laughs> so we can do we can do something real early tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we can do uh, beans and fried plantain. Be Ooh. And, nice. Uh, yeah, we usually call it red red here. That's on my list. Understand? Yes. So That's on my list, sir. Red red for sure. Beans and fried plantain, and then maybe uh, subsequently you have to do banku and tilapia, which is. Uh, That's on my list, on as, list well. as well. Yep. Yeah. But I don't think uh, you can have both on the same, same day. Thing. It's very filling. You understand? Yeah. Uh, Banku and tilapia alone is uh, it will it will take up the whole space in your stomach. <laughs> so I guess uh, we could we could do either one of them tomorrow. Can't you? Yeah. Or right. if we could do it earlier, we could do the beans and plantains. Beans early maybe let's say by 10 a.m oh let's do then, that then and then by 2 p.m we could do the bank going to up here gotcha and, and we can call it a rough for tomorrow all right 
So one thing that I have noticed, I don't know if because of my subscribers have just been, you know, they have great hospitality, but Ghanaian so far seems very hospitable. Um, Eddie took his time out to actually chill with us and hang with us today, and I really appreciate it. I can't say that enough. One thing I need to point out though, that's very important. Um, Eddie mentioned to me earlier today that um, last night we went out to try to get some fufu and we couldn't get any fufu we only saw kenke on the list this was about nine o'clock and eddie said to me that hey you're not going to find fufu anytime after 5 p.m because it is a heavier dish let me tell you eating one ball of fufu is almost eating like five boiled dumplings back home in jamaica so it's quite a bit so you're saying it's very heavy for the stomach so Ghanaians usually do not eat it late evenings especially if you have any health concerns it's really hard for it to be digested so you're gonna be able to get kenke in the night so that's one thing if you're trying to get fufu at some point in time in the day please keep that in mind anyway we're gonna wrap up today's video and we look forward to seeing Eddie tomorrow in the wrap Eddie has been amazing with a bunch of information and getting us around that's oh Julie had anything to say no. Eddie. <laughs> <laughs> Probably three things. Love, nature, and adaptation. And remember to keep the link while you're rocking out to the big artist, Gregory Isaac. <laughs>